资料。Hello and welcome to spend less time in your Outlook inbox, where we're going to cover some email productivity tips. My name is Nathan Austin and I'll be presenting today and behind the scenes we have Stephanie Kingsley who will be uh, producing as well as uh, monitoring and managing the Q&A panel. Uh, so just a couple housekeeping items <clears throat> as we get going. The Q&A panel, uh, as you have questions, even if you have them right now, go ahead and start uh, posting them there. We will be going through about 30 minutes of content that's prescriptive around things that we've learned and experienced from uh, working with our clients. Uh, and then we'll open it up for the Q&A and we'll go as deep as we need to go um, uh, afterwards. So hopefully you can stick around and uh, we look forward to digging in and answering everyone's question. But in the meantime, uh, this is actually one of my favorite little topics because uh, there are some newer capabilities um, and some of them are older capabilities, but there's some newer capabilities in Outlook that allow you to do to manage your inbox a little bit better um, and spend less time doing it. So um, that is what we're going to cover today. So I'm excited about that. Uh, real quick, the agenda again, it's new or lesser known features of Outlook. We're going to cover that. We will also delve in a little bit of uh, into kind of the next part, the versions of Outlook. So part of what I mean by versions is um, uh, Office 2013 versus 2016 versus 2019, but also understanding that there's also an Outlook web access and there are some differences there too. So we'll touch base on those things. Um, and then we'll hit on some common problems experienced with Outlook and email. These are, um, I, I grabbed a, a subset of um, challenges and problems that people have expressed to us uh, over the last couple of years of, of hosting these kind of sessions and really digging into the challenges people have with the Outlook and email. Um, so we'll cover some of those, but again, if, if you have any questions that we're not covering, by all means, please put them in the Q&A and we'll dig into them afterwards. Uh, and then we'll just go into a quick demonstration and I'll show uh, key ways to find these different tips and features um, and uh, you can figure out which ones make sense for you. Uh, then we'll open up for the Q&A. So I'm looking forward to that. All right. So uh, as many of you, if you've seen any of these sessions before, we'd like to have just one minute about MyTech. Just so you know, we are not a training company. Um, we are a small and medium sized business technology and business uh, business and technology consulting organization uh, where we uh, over the last 20 years, we've learned uh, certain sets of technology that really work well together. So we, we call that our proven IT strategy. Uh, we know that that set of, of pieces and technologies and pieces that all work together um, can deliver proven and consistent results for our clients. And that's in the end what our clients oftentimes come to us for is proven results. Uh, so we also understand that not every business problem that we have is an IT problem, um, but we are hoping to be able to take at least the IT challenges off your plate so that all the other challenges that are not IT problems, you can spend your, uh, your time uh, on those instead of IT problems. Uh, the way we coach our team to engage our clients is to make IT easy for you. It doesn't always make IT easy Eat, make IT easy for us and it doesn't always mean we achieve that but that is our goal and so we always ask our clients if, if we're not doing that please let us know it's our opportunity to learn and grow and coach our team uh, but and putting all these pieces together uh, we've been able to realize that our clients can achieve four times more value and productivity from their IT investments so if you'd like to learn about more a little more about that by all means please give us a shout um, look we would love to talk to you about that but that's not why you're here today so let's dig into why you are here today Okay, so uh, first and foremost, I do feel like there's in several of these sessions, we've found that there are some kind of disclaimers or gotchas or just pieces that we want to make sure that we cover so that you don't get disappointed or try and find these and realize that you don't have the right pieces in place. So we're going to cover that and then uh, we'll get into just a summary of the business problems that we're going to try and solve and then we'll demonstrate that. So um, here's a few things that I, I want to make sure that we communicate. One. Um, like I did some searching and did some research on this session uh, and one of the things that didn't that that uh, I saw a couple of blog posts on that I thought were interesting is that um, nearly all of these settings are client side settings. What I mean by that is that the individual Outlook application that sits on your PC or your laptop or even your mobile device, by the way, um, uh, they're client side settings. So that means that you might have, uh, if you have like your, your laptop, you might have settings on uh, set one way, but you might on your mobile set a different way, or if you have a desktop set a different way. So um, it, it, you can do some global pushes. Like, so for instance, if you wanted to have everyone in your organization uh, have these features kind of set, there are a couple of those that you can do, um, but in general, 
uh, this uh, managing your email is a very personal um, uh, experience and uh, nearly all of the settings we're talking about today are individual settings that you as a, as a user of Outlook, as a, as a consumer of, of these tools can set and customize to your own uh, liking and preferences. All right, so it's a, just a little nuance there. Um, there are differences in the uh, desktop application versus the web access. One of the things that we've been covering in, in these virtual sessions is things like Teams and Planner and To-Do and, um, and SharePoint. And, and a lot of these, if they have a desktop app versus the web app, they look nearly identical. I mean, Word and Excel, I mean, when you, when you get into the browser version versus the desktop version, they're nearly identical. Um, so there's subtle differences, don't get me wrong, but for some reason with Outlook, the desktop version and the web version completely different and this, the, the menu bars are in completely different places and some of the things you can't even do uh, in the web access versus the desktop version. So we're going to cover a little bit of that today, but I always like to call that out. So if you have members of your team that are using the web access version and you're using the Outlook desktop version um, and you're trying to communicate, uh, you're really kind of speaking a different language. So just understand that. Um, the other thing that I would say around the versions of Outlook is uh, Microsoft is definitely, they're always charging forward and um, a lot of these features are only available in 2016 and newer. So that means uh, Office 2016 or Outlook 2016, Outlook 2019 uh, or Office 2019, and the uh, if you're subscribing to Outlook or Office via O365 or your Microsoft 365 subscription, that's basically a continually iterated version of, of Office. And so uh, that's also um, all these features available there too. So just know that. Um, one of the things to note for those of you who might still be using Outlook 2013 or Office 2013, uh, end of extended support, you got a couple more years left on that, but we're already starting to see um, limited integration or limited feature uh, capabilities when you're, if you're, Outlook application is talking to the Microsoft 365 cloud. So just know that there are some feature differences there and some challenges that you might have if you're still running Outlook 2013, even though technically it's still under extended support from Microsoft. Um, so that's one of the reasons why if you are in that place, we would definitely suggest and where the world is going from a Microsoft perspective is, is the subscription route, which a lot of things are, um, but Microsoft is going to iterate the subscription version and you'll have more continuous updates on the subscription version than if than the historical or legacy, if you will, um, like I said, maybe not the right way to say it, but um, open license or one-time purchase of the license that might either be licensed to your machine um, or that you buy in a volume license um, like th through a company like MyTech. So uh, definitely moving down the subscription route, they're doing tighter integration with the subscription in Microsoft 365, as well as continual and, and more regular feature updates too. So consider that if you're looking at um, making a change, especially for instance, if you're still on Outlook or Office 2013. So a couple of disclaimers, just it's important to be understand because I, I don't want to dig into all this stuff and then maybe you're using Office 2013 um, or maybe you're using the web access versus the desktop version. Just just be aware um, of some of these nuances as we as we dig in. OK, uh, all right. Next. Uh, so here's some of the common problems that we hear when we ask uh, people in our sessions. We like to ask, um, what's the problem you're trying to solve? You know, really focus in on what's the challenge you're having. Um, I, I definitely like talking about here's this feature or that feature, but the more clearly you understand the problem you're trying to solve, uh, the more uh, obvious the answer is as far as what problem is going to or what solution is going to best solve it. So um, one of the things I like to comment around uh, too much email is that we're not necessarily going to be able to help you limit the amount of email you get. Right, because that's that's the challenging thing. Um, uh, one of the things you can do is maybe use Teams um, for internal communication, so you can reduce some of the internal email communications that you get. Um, but our goal here is not necessarily to, to limit the number of email, the amount of email you get, is to help you uh, manage the email with fewer clicks. Uh, so that's really, uh, or spend less time digging, you know, having to manage your email. So that's really the objective. Um, you know, one of the things that we hear from folks <clears throat> is. Uh, reminders and to do's from email. So how many of you have uh, get emails and I'm, I'm virtually asking you to kind of raise your hand or acknowledge this as I'm asking this question as I know you're not able to verbally respond to me right now, <clears throat> but how many of you get emails that um, you can quickly reply and that's all you need to do, 
sometimes you get those emails that are like, oh, I need to spend more time on this, or I need to block off time on my calendar, or I need to make sure that gets done by, by the end of next week, um, where you end up having action items or to-dos that come out of those emails. Um, and there's some good ways to manage that and some not best practices ways to manage that. Again, I understand this is a very personal experience, uh, but, but that's one of the big things that we hear from folks is helping them manage that aspect of email uh, better. Um, another one is grouping emails. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that with the conversations and we'll show you a little bit about that. Um, that's also a feature that I found that some people really love it and some people really don't. Um, and that's okay, right? Really, it's a, again, it's a personal experience and it's also something that you can easily toggle on or off. So if it's something that you want to use because it, it'll help you group a conversation if you're out of the office for a little bit, or it's something that if you don't like in general, you can also turn it off really easily too. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Um, and then sorting and filtering. There's some really um, unique sorting and filtering capabilities that are available in 2016 or newer uh, that also apply to your mobile. Um, if, you have, if you have Outlook on your mobile as well. Um, and if you're not using uh, Outlook mobile versus just like your native phone app, I definitely recommend downloading it. Uh, I really like uh, the interface. Uh, I've used it probably for the last year or two. Um, so the Outlook mobile is really nice uh, and it's free. Uh, so we'll talk about sorting and filtering um, as far as just being able to kind of get at information faster. And uh, finally, uh, some people still use rules. So we'll talk about rules, subfolders, and another thing that another key feature um, that if you haven't seen or know that it's available is search folders and whether or not that might make sense for you. So those are the key problems that we've seen that people are trying to solve is again, manage the to-dos. Um, like when I, when I talk about the grouping emails, I like to give an example. How many of you have uh, come back to the office maybe after a half day meeting or just a meeting out away or, or taking a day off um, and you've got several emails that have bounced back and forth, you know, on a reply all chain or something like that. Um, and you catch one and you reply to it, and then you realize that later on in the chain, someone already answered the question, but you hadn't gotten through the whole chain yet. Um, that's the, the business problem that I often try and, times try and solve. The other thing is that if, if, if there's 10 emails or five emails that have gone back and forth, uh, maybe minimizing how you have to click in each one of those emails, right? So grouping emails is, is more of the feature than the problem, but trying to make sure that you're, you're not replying out of band uh, and that, you know, uh, managing the number of emails and, and getting them out of your inbox uh, faster is one of the things that an example I like to give. So hoping some of you might, uh, that might resonate with some of you uh, and, and put a smile on your face like, yep, that's happened to me. Uh, I know I've done that multiple times. So anyway, those are some of the ideas we're gonna talk about today. Uh, so without further ado, um, let's dig in and um, you know, kind of walk through uh, a demonstration of Outlook tips and some of the time-saving capabilities uh, in Outlook. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna go to, the um, see the chest bar <clears throat> again. So I've opened up Outlook. Um, you know, one of the things I like to note, like if I uh, I was going to say this is um, uh, the um, about um, I, this is actually the Office 365 version uh, of Outlook. <clears throat> I was going to show that it was going to say Outlook 360 or Office 365 version. Um, but so this is basically the subscription version. So if you're subscribing to Office 365, that's the version that this is, which is uh, very similar to uh, Office 2019. But there's probably some subtle differences. Um, <clears throat> just if you're trying to compare it to your Outlook version. The other thing that I've done, actually I'm going to escape out of this. The other thing is that I've um, pulled up Outlook Web Access too. So um, notice how uh, it kind of looks the same, but yet uh, it's not, it's different. So we, we will go back and forth a little bit into uh, Outlook Web Access, um, but for the most part, we're going to spend our time in, uh, in Outlook. So, uh, okay, so uh, let's start with reminders and to-dos. Um, how many of you have, um, you know, especially if you're on your mobile, this is where I was probably the most guilty of it is I would get an email, I'd read it on my mobile. Again, sometimes it's just an informational thing. Great. I read it. I don't need to do anything with it. Um, sometimes I need to reply and I can do that really quick. Other times I need to think about it more or I'm like, Hey, you know, when I get back to the office, um, or in front of my laptop, um, I'll, that's where I'll dig into that. Um, how many of you would mark those emails as unread? I know that that's what I did. So the problem with that <clears throat> is that if you mark it as unread, now you have emails in your inbox that are unread because you haven't read them or you didn't want to read them. 
and you have emails in your inbox that are unread that you actually are intending to do something with or, or an action item for you. And then trying to sort and filter through that um, takes a lot of time because you've already read it once, right? You've already looked at it once. You've already recognized you need to do it once. So let's try and minimize you having to do that again. So, um, so what I'd recommend, again, you can also do this. Um, you can do parts of this uh, on mobile. Some of it you can't do on mobile, <clears throat> but you can flag emails on mobile. So instead of saying, let's say I needed to do something with this uh, email right here, instead of right clicking and saying mark is unread, which I don't want to do, um, I'm actually, uh, so I'm click on it, so it'll go, so now it's unread. What I can do is I hover over it, I can flag it as a to-do. Um, so this is something that I can do, uh, flag it, notice it kind of gives me a visual cue. It also popped over here in my to-do um, under my flagged emails. Um, the other thing I can do is I right click on that and I can say, well, when do I want to do this? Custom date, no date, do I want to set a reminder? Um, maybe I've completed it so I can complete it. <clears throat> so know, know that uh, flagging it is one way to do it. <clears throat> the other thing that I like, um, th and you can do the flagging from your mobile device. So that actually works really well. And if you flag it on your mobile device, it will show up here in your flagged emails. Um, and I'll also show you the to-do app um, where you can kind of consolidate some of those uh, as well because the flagged emails will show up there too. <clears throat> so um, one of the other things that I like um, is, so flagging is one of those things you can do. The other thing that you can do is I like you can just drag and drop. So I'm just I clicked on it and I'm just dragging it. Um, I can drag it right down here to the calendar. So I do that. It pops up. It takes that email, makes it a calendar appointment, and I can say I'm going to block off time on my schedule tomorrow morning to get this done. Um, you know, a lot of times time management best practices is to actually try and block something off and allocate the amount of time that you genuinely think it's going to take you to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and save and close that. Now I've, of course, I have it flagged and scheduled. I probably wouldn't do both, but for the sake of the illustration, hopefully you get my point. Um, the other thing you can do is maybe you don't want to schedule it on your calendar, and maybe you don't like using the flagged email function, but you want to make it a task. You can do the same thing. You can drag and drop it right down here to this little task icon, and now instead of a calendar appointment, it makes it a task. You can also do a start date and due date, um, et cetera. So I can say, hey, I want to get, I want to work on this, you know, maybe Monday, um, and I can say it's not due until. You know Wednesday, so I can just put that on on, on a task list for myself, um, and then I can save and close that. So really quickly, instead of um, having to copy and paste or go down into your tasks and potentially say new task, and now you know type in new task, you know uh, let's say new task, um, and then try and put all the information in. You can do that easily with just dragging and dropping an email that might have a to do or an action item in there for you. Um, so uh, actually, I will say I'm going to save this new task from uh, 5 slash 28. I'm going to use that for illustration purposes. So I'm going to save and close that. <clears throat> so notice um, I've got my task, but I also have my flagged emails uh, show up here um, as well, which is kind of nice. Um, and then I'm also going to hover over here and show you how if you're used the to do app, um, which uh, this little checkbox here, if you're not familiar with it, you can download it here. But notice um, this just popped up because I added that to my tasks. Um, so uh, when I clicked on that, um, and then uh, I can also have my flagged emails um, pop in here too, uh, but I have to add those, I believe. So, but you see, here's the task that I just created uh, by dragging and dropping that email, and it just popped in here as a new task for me to do. Um, so that's something you can do. And if you're not familiar with the to-do app, um, I would recommend, um, I'm just going into a browser. If you just go to uh, office.com and log in, um, you can click on the to-do app here. Um, so you click on that, it'll open up to do. There is a browser version of to do, as you'll see here, but also um, if you want to download the app, when you click on it, you can just click down here, whether you're on a Mac, uh, Windows, or Android device, depending on what you're, uh, what you're accessing. So if you want to use the to do app, it's great. Um, and notice that new task just popped in here as well. Um, so the, uh, the task that I created uh, from a drag and drop, my email popped in, and the new task that I manually added by creating a new task um, just popped in here as well. Um, and that should also show up here in the, the to do app. Um, so that's something, if you're not familiar with the to-do app, we're not going to spend enough time, we don't have enough time to talk about that more today, but I wanted to illustrate how um, if you're using the to-do app to manage your, um, your action items and to-dos and your emails, um, you can also uh, connect your, your, your tasks um, into the to-do app, which is really nice. Okay, um, so those are three ways to do it. Flag. Um, now, if you're in the Outlook Web Access version, 
I'll go back over here, the web access version. You can't drag and drop. I tried it. Like I can't drag and drop it to, to either one of those tasks or my calendar. But what I can do is I can right click on it um, and I can flag it or unflag it here. Um, and then uh, I can also create task. So this is where I can do that here. So you right click on the email that you want to do that instead of dragging and drop in the web ac in the um, web version if you're interested. What I also found is in the web version, I, I don't know of a way, I tried to find a way to, to make it a calendar appointment. I wasn't able to do that. Um, and that maybe that's one of those just differences in the web access that you don't have. So just be aware again, a little idiosyncrasy there between web access and the application. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about grouping emails. Uh, so um, what that's called is um, conversations. So if you click on the view menu at the top here, um, of a feature set that's right here is conversations. So you click on converse, you can say show us conversations, and then you can also hit this little drop down here that says show conversation settings, and you can choose, do I wanna show messages from other folders? So for instance, if I have any messages in any of the subfolders that I might have, um, or deleted folders, for example, do I wanna um, do I wanna expand the selection? How do I want it to, to interact or react when, uh, when I do the conversation settings? And if you wanna toggle that on or off, um, you just hit, you just choose that um, or not. Right, so I'm going to cancel that because I do want um, I do want uh, all mailboxes um, is what I typically select. So select that in there, uh, all mailboxes. Um, I'm canceling that because I, I do want to show us conversation settings. So what that does, and I'm going to illustrate um, here, is that I have a conversation, um, and just to illustrate, this is the email that I sent. Right, so if I click on here, so this is the sent item. So this is actually pulling this into the conversation string from my sent item because that's the option I selected. Um, and then uh, Stephanie replied. She just re she replied to uh, Gerald and myself, and then she just replied to me here. Um, so one of the things that if this was you and you're coming back in now, maybe there's more emails here. One of the features that I like to show, I'm going to go back up to the home menu to show this capability, is um, I like the cleanup feature because if you had a bunch of information in there, um, and actually it's probably not going to clean much up because um, there's not enough a lot to clean up. But if if you right click, if you show that, if you hover over it, it says remove redundant messages in the selected conversation um, to basically to the deleted items bin. So I'm going to clean up this conversation. And it says all redundant message in the conversation will be moved to the deleted items folder. So you don't show this again. I'll hit clean up. Um, and no messages were cleaned up. And I knew why, because Stephanie didn't send any redundant messages. Um, and that kind of illustrates the point. A lot of people get fearful of using that. But um, for instance, because she replied to all, so this is a unique message. And then she replied just to me, and that's a unique message. So there was nothing to clean up. So it didn't delete anything because there was unique information in there. But if, if there was a reply to all string where Gerald had replied and Stephanie replied and I had replied to everyone and I hit clean up, it, if there was five of those messages that had all the information, uh, it would delete all those. It would delete four of those five messages, so that I only had to read one email. And that way, I didn't have to mark. Um, I didn't have to click into every single email. I can just come in and click uh, conversations. So Stephanie just did replying again um, to to both of us. Um, so now, if I click clean up, um, thank you, Stephanie, for illustrating that. Um, um, no, I didn't. It didn't. It, because uh, you need to reply to the reply to all. So anyway, because um, uh, there's not a unique, there's not a unique message. You have to reply all to uh, this one as well, Stephanie. Um, so anyway, you get the idea around that. It, it saves email. You also don't have to select a conversation when you click clean up. You can just say clean up folder and subfolders. So I like to come in here. You can just click this. If you get in the habit um, of doing that. Um, again, I don't have any messages to clean up because it's the demo environment, but if you get in the habit of doing that, like when you come back from a half day away or a planning meeting or a PTO day or a sick day, um, uh, hit clean up and then any redundant messages will automatically remo remove. So you don't have to click through those emails. Um, and again, the problem that you're trying to solve is not having to reply to an email out of band, um, which is helpful and not having to click into every single one of those emails. Um, so that's um, one of the conversation capabilities and cleaning up the conversation. The other thing you can do uh, if you get into uh, now we'll get into kind of sorting and filtering um, is uh, you can actually there's the focused and the other. I don't know if folks are familiar um, with those um, focused or other, um, but this is something that's new in 2016. Um, and it's basically a way for you to manage like here are my priority emails and maybe you can manage your settings to say, for instance, this one's focused. This is a Microsoft email. I don't really need to see this in my focused. So what I can do is I can right click on that and say, I want to move to other, 
or I want to always move to other. So I'm going to select that one because anytime all future messages from Microsoft Azure will go to the other tab. Yes. And that way um, I can then build my preferences as far as what emails I want to see in my focus or in my other inbox. Some people like this or don't. Um, and I'll show you, we can turn that on or off. Um, and let's say this, the, the My Analytics is something I wanted to see, or maybe this thing from My Tech I want to see in my focus. So I can do the same thing, right click, come down here and I can say move to focus or always move to focus. So I can choose and basically build uh, um, my preferences around uh, managing um, in my focus inbox or my other inbox. Now, if you don't like either one of those, you can come right up here to the view tab. And right here is where you can say show, show focus inbox or not, and you just click on that, it goes away, um, or you can click on it and it comes back. So that's a quick way that you can choose to do that or not. Um, again, personal preference, either way works. Um, so those are a couple of little tricks uh, that work really well. I'm going to show you real quick how to how to open those up in Outlook. So for instance, you don't have the you do have the focus or the other. It works the same as far as if I wanted to right click um, and I believe I can move uh, and this is where I can click move to other or always move to other. So it's a little bit different in OWA because it's not in the email string. I got to click move first and then I can make those settings. So that's where I can choose that. Um, also, if you if you recall, there's no view menu here, so I can't I don't how do I even click on the view menu to either show his conversation or show the focus inbox? So you actually have to come up here to the settings if you're in Outlook Web Access and click settings. And then this is where you can toggle on uh, the focus inbox or not. Um, again, you can toggle it back on. Um, if you scroll down a little further, this is also where you can choose to turn on conversation view on or off. Um, and the reading pane on or off. And if you want to dig into more of the Outlook settings, you can just click here and you'll get those, you know, a little bit more of those settings uh, here as well. So um, that's just something that's, again, a nuance of where it's different in Outlook Web Access uh, versus um, like this is also where you find rules um, and some of these other capabilities that we're not going to get into today. Um, but this is also where really up here is the settings where you can find some of those capabilities in Web Access. OK, um, so those are some of the capabilities there. I'm going to go back to Outlook as we're wrapping up time here. I'm going to go back to the home menu. Um, one of the things that I do like um, is you can um, uh, ignore. So for instance, I've picked this conversation and I can choose ignore. Um, and this will say this action will apply to all items in the selected conversation. So I'm going to say OK. And the selected conversation and all future messages will be moved to the deleted items folder. Um, why might you do this? Um, well, what if uh, you know there's an email about um, a picnic uh, this weekend or someone people are grilling out or they're going to go on a bike ride or something like that and you're included in that email. Um, but if that's something that you know you can't go, like I'm going out of town this weekend, so I'm not going to be able to participate in the bike ride that people are planning. So instead of having to mark, go through all those emails when they come in, you can just hit ignore. You can do that at the conversation level or the individual email level um, and then saying, yep, I'm going to ignore this conversation and it should move all of those uh, now are in my deleted items. Um, and uh, sorry, Stephanie, if you reply to any of those anymore, I'm not going to get them because I've chosen to ignore that conversation. So that's one of the little tips. Again, I don't see people using that that often because they're nervous that, well, what if somebody knows that I'm on the email and chooses to reply to that email string and it did intend it for me? Yep, that's going to go to the deleted items bin. So be aware of that as a risk. Um, but that's just something you can do um, for ignoring because let's say I wanted to ignore this Microsoft Azure. I could right click on it um, and I can um, I believe I can do ignore down here as well. So if I click that, it'll say this selected conversation and all future messages will be moved to deleted items. So this is kind of uh, creating a rule to say, hey, I don't want to see this anymore. So you can ignore that conversation as well um, if that comes through. So you can do it multiple ways. Um, do it up here at the top or you can right click um, and choose ignore as well. Um, so what we've shown so far is that you can select an email, you can move it back and forth between other and focused, you can ignore it, but there's also the junk where you can then start choosing to block uh, your senders. Because um, one of the things that I uh, oftentimes don't do is, and it's, it's kind of personal preference where you choose to either um, unsubscribe or not to certain messages or newsletters that you might get. Because if you're unsubscribing, you're basically also validating that your email is good and that you're receiving it. Whereas if you use these capabilities, you're blocking that information or that email from your, your view, but yet you're not also at the same time validating that your email is good and that you're receiving the, 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 the 
spam email that you might that you don't want to uh, actually receive. So these are some ways to be able to kind of manage those preferences for yourself um, as far as being able to block sender or not. Um, and just know that it goes to what it does is it, it'll take this information and it'll put it in the junk email folder. OK, so I'm going to actually say let's move this to junk. Um, I'm going to block sender. Um, so now that's the, the sender uh, Azure has basically been added to my block senders list and the messages moved to the junk folder. Great. Now, what if I want to change that? So I can actually come in here to the junk email box. And if I do want to change that, again, I can just right click again and I could actually uh, um, change that or I could, you know, uh, move that back, uh, you know, basically on the junk email options or I can say not junk and it'll go back. So that's where you can manage those preferences. Um, so there's this focused other ignore and junk that you can do um, uh, in your by sorting and filtering. There are some capabilities. Uh, some of those are old capabilities. Some of those are new between focused and other, for example. Um, OK, so the last feature that I'm going to show you um, because uh, I'm not going to dig into like subfolders, but I'm going to talk about one particular feature set that is um, that I think is uh, kind of a cool feature is um, is, uh, is search folders. The reason why I talked about that in, in the, the relation of managing rules and subfolders is this is one of those things that the world is very diametrically opposed. You get people on one camp that says, I love categorizing and sorting everything in my subfolders. And you get people in another camp that says, I if it's if it, I move it to a subfolder, it's out of sight, out of mind. I forget about it, so I really can't use subfolders. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to both parties uh, at, the, at this point, which is one of the reasons why sub, uh, search folders works actually really well. Um, you know, even if you're if you're manually moving uh, items into those subfolders, or if you're creating rules to move things into those subfolders, um, search folders, not subfolders, search folders is which is right over here, uh, is kind of a combination of both. Um, so for instance. Um, if I right click here, I can create a new search folder. One of the search folders that I like to use um, is uh, unread email. So I'm actually just going to, here's the different options that you can choose um, as far as it's kind of like creating rules, um, but instead it's actually not moving the items from your inbox. So I'll give you an example. So I'm going to create unread mail, click OK. So now I have a new search folder that's unread mail, and um, all it does is it, is it, Run, it's basically running that search criteria when I select that when I select this folder and it's only showing me my unread email. Um, and then similarly, I created one for Stephanie. So this is running a search criteria saying, hey, anything from Stephanie and it's only showing me the emails from Stephanie, whether they're read or unread. Um, no notice um, when I go here to the inbox, uh, I'm going to click on one of these um, so that uh, it shows as unread. And notice it went unread, so it didn't actually move um, uh, the the email. It just it's showing me the email uh, here in the search folder. So it's basically um, it's like executing a quick search. Um, so for those of you who like to use the search function of Outlook, um, I'm trying to find where the search function is on this menu bar because I don't have it up here. But where if you're using search and if there's a common search that you're doing on a regular basis, um, then um, this is a way in which you can do uh, common searches like, hey, I work with Stephanie all the time. Instead of having to run a search from Stephanie or click from and, and et cetera, I can actually just create a search folder for Stephanie and click on that. The other thing that I'd recommend, again, if you're using search folders, um, and this is slightly different in uh, Outlook Web Access, by the way, is that you can um, right click on this and add to favorites. So um, I'm going to actually add both of these to favorites. Again, notice it didn't move it. It just also added it to favorites kind of as a shortcut. Um, I actually like um, to be able to use this and sometimes when I'm going through my unread email, I like to have a search folder that's unread email. So instead of in my inbox trying to scroll down through any of my unread emails and go back, you know, time because I don't delete my emails. This is just me personally. I, I just leave them as unread when I'm done with them. Um, but instead of having to scroll, I can just come in here and click unread email and now I only see the five messages that are unread. So it allows me to very quickly navigate instead of having to scroll and go through historical information. Um, so these are just a couple different tips and tricks as far as being able to sort and filter and manage uh, information because here it's not moving the information out of your inbox. 
Um, so the out of sight, out of mind problem that I know I have that problem as an example. Um, but for you, you folks who like having things in subfolders, that might work for you too. Um, it be, but it doesn't move it out of your inbox. Just know that. Um, but it just it runs that search criteria and presents that information to you um, whenever you click on it um, on a regular basis. So those are some of the key capabilities that I wanted to um, kind of go through as far as showing how to create some of these folders and then adding some favorites. I'll show you real quick in web access how to do that. Um, search folders, I have not seen where search folders exist in Outlook web access, by the way. Um, but what I was able to see um, uh, is adding a favorite for instance, I can choose Stephanie like I did uh, in, in, um, the Outlook, um, in the Outlook client. I chose Stephanie and now it's showing me stuff from Stephanie. So I was able to do something very similar as I did in the search folder on the Outlook web app and the Outlook desktop apps. Um, but I, I basically just added a favorite and it chose and it allowed me to, to choose that. Um, so these are just things that you can do um, with Outlook web access. Again, I know most of you don't use Outlook web access, but I always like to illustrate that this is one of the applications that's so different between the two, um, between Outlook and Outlook Web Access. So, um, okay, I'm gonna go back to Outlook. Uh, and um, so we really have gone through everything. So the next slide, um, as we kind of a summary, I, I wanted to, I just kind of, if, if, if people like taking pictures of a slide because it's got the tips to work on or like notes, this is the slide to do it. Um, you know, again, the idea is too much email, uh, we're not going to be able to limit the amount of email you get. We'll hopefully give you fewer clicks to manage it. Um, the only thing I can suggest is maybe using Teams for internal communication. If that's a choice your organization makes, you can start reducing some of the amount of email you're having to manage. Um, if you're trying to manage your reminders and to-dos from emails, use the flag capability, create a task, or use the schedule, um, and then use the to-do app as well. Um, that's great little tips. Uh, if you're grouping emails, try showing as conversations or using favorites. Um, that can help you like the unread mailbox or favorites from individual people. That can maybe help you um, search faster so you're not having to use the search function to get your email that you want to um, manage. Um, using the focus, other, uh, junk, or ignore, uh, or cleanup uh, in conversations. Um, that's, that's some capabilities that allows you fewer clicks to manage your email. Um, and then if you're using rules or subfolders, um, one of the things you might try is search folders and see if that works for you, if you like that, if that might help you. If you're running, in particular, if you're someone that runs regular searches, um, think about creating some search folders because that's just one click away um, instead of typing in that search every time. So those are the tips that uh, I would suggest. Not all of those are gonna be applicable to you. So I totally understand that if you're really clear about the problem you're trying to solve relative to managing your email, maybe grab one or, one or two of those that make sense to you and just try it. See if you can try a couple of them and see how you like it. You might not, and that's okay. Uh, this is a very personal experience managing your email, um, but I hope some of these tips were beneficial uh, and join us for future sessions um, as we have uh, next week. We've got a virtual session next week and then we also have a, our power user group next Friday. Um, so if you're a power user in the organization or you're one of those folks that really is going to help drive adoption of these tools uh, inside your organization, you want to learn a little bit more about the back end of what goes on in Office 365, join us next week. We do that every month. Um, love to have you. Um, but for now, I ran a little long, so sorry about that, but I didn't want to leave anything out. Uh, so thanks for attending this session so you can hopefully spend less time in your Outlook inbox. And uh, for those of you who have to drop off now, thank you very much for attending. Hope it was valuable. And for those that can stick around, Stephanie, let's open it up for questions um, uh, for everybody else. Awesome. Thank you, Nate. Um, first question we have here is in to do. Is there a way to move older tasks to a new list without losing them? For example, I have a lot of flagged email from the last few years. I basically would like to be able to start fresh on a task filter list, but not losing older ones until I have time to look through them all. Um, good question. So I believe you can. Um, so one of the things that I've done, and I, I don't know if this answers your question, so forgive me if it doesn't, but um, you can create a new task list basically. So let's, let's say I'm going to call this uh, old stuff. Um, or maybe I'll call it new stuff. You want to start, uh, start new, right? I'll say start, uh, start new. Um, so you might be able to then start new here and then maybe you keep your tasks over here um, that, that are old. I mean, you could do the reverse where you can move this. Um, you can actually move it um, easily in the to-do app. I don't think you can do that as easy in the web version of to-do. That's why I would recommend downloading the, the app. Um, you might be able to do the drag and drop, excuse me, drag and drop that I just showed you, but I'm not sure if you can do that in the web version. Um, but 
that's probably that you can create new um, task lists here um, as many as you want and call them what you want. Um, you can share them with folks too, like you kind of see here that that's why you get the little people icon you can see there. Um, I'm sure that with Gerald, I've shared this with Stephanie. That's one of the ways in which you could do it. But just know that the stuff up here is where uh, this is the planner tasks that are assigned and these are outlook tasks that are assigned. And then I can't remember the setting for, um, there's a way to grab the, um, yeah, here's where you, if you click on this up here, um, this is also where I can pull in. I don't think I pulled in flagged emails. Um, yeah, flag email, so I turn that off. So I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to turn planner tasks on as well. So that's where you can manage those settings. Um, so now you'll see flag email also shows up here. So um, I think that answers your question um, I, as far as not where you can. I think the best way to do is you can drag and drop this stuff. Uh, and that's probably the easiest way where you can either start new and leave them here or you could like move them all. Um, and then um, before. <coughs> oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm alone in this room, so that's 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 good. Um, uh, but yeah, that's probably the way that in which you could do that is uh, just start new um, in that regard. Because I know what you mean. One of the things that I also found, by the way, as a best practice for those of you who are using Planner, um, Stephanie and I ran into this because we started using Planner uh, shortly after it came out, and we were excited to try this new tool. Um, but what we started doing is is Planner was was uh, a dumping ground for ideas. So it was a, it was like our parking board, which isn't a bad thing that we we had a parking board. It's just what it did though um, is now that I've added the planner task is that we had a bunch of um, uh, to dos uh, that were in our planner that didn't have a due date because we didn't actually schedule a due date. It wasn't an action item to get done, so we actually had clogged up our to do list with stuff that really wasn't important and really didn't have a, a due date or an action item associated with it. So um, that's similar, I think, to the challenge that you've got. You've got old stuff that you don't want to ignore or get rid of, but how do you clean it up so that you can really focus on um, the stuff that's important? So that might be a way to do it, is creating new here um, as, a, as, a, as an idea. Hopefully that answers the question. If not, please uh, uh, put another comment to clarify so I can dig in a little deeper. <clears throat> awesome, and we do not have any further questions right now. Okay. Awesome. So hopefully that was beneficial for everyone. <clears throat> really, when you get into Outlook, again, it's very personal, uh, personal preference as far as managing these different capabilities. Um, and some of these feature sets, when you get into like the folks and other, as I mentioned, those are on the newer versions of Outlook 2016 or, or newer. Um, and uh, again, I, I'm not trying to tell you, we're not trying to tell you how to manage your email. Some people are zero inbox people at the end of the day. Some people don't like having, uh, they have zero unread inbox emails. Some people have, um, no email physically at all. That's 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 their to-do list and they get it out of there. And some people have thousands of emails in their inbox. Um, you know, and I know I was one of those people in the past until I got better at managing my inbox um, and using these capabilities. So I've been able to manage my inbox so much better and it's given me a lot better, um, I don't know if sanity is not the right word, but it's given me a lot better peace of mind knowing that I'm not missing um, critical information or I'm not forgetting to get back to someone because I'm doing a better job of flagging the things that are important to me, scheduling the things that I need to actually do, um, and and getting rid of the stuff that I don't need to pay attention to. So hopefully, again, that's our goal really for everyone is to um, you know, just spend less time doing the tedious things um, and more time actually doing productive um, and highest, the, the highest and best use of our time. So hopefully that was great. Um, again, I'm Nathan Austin. Um, thanks, and Stephanie, thanks for producing behind the scenes. And for everyone out there, join us, see you next time, and we look forward to talking to you soon.